Hello and welcome to Campus Watch. I'm Kelly Martin. And we better doing this. Audience members could not stop the beat when Repercussion came to perform at Aiken Auditorium on January 19th. Drummers banged along to old and new songs, but they couldn't do it without audience interaction. Community members and students joined in on the fun on stage for comedic drum sessions while family members cheered them on from the audience section. Mechanical engineering junior Heather Goolsby says she is a new fan of the repercussion after seeing them perform and performing alongside them. I was very nervous. I'm not good with rhythm. I have no rhythm, so it was it was nervous, but it was really fun once you got into it, and they were just kind of keeping you going as you were playing. <laughs> if you would like to hear more about events on campus like this, visit the MWSU event calendar online. What is worth waking up at 5 in the morning for on a Saturday? For some Wichita Fall natives, the answer is pancakes. Reporter Rachel Johnson has more on this hometown tradition. Every year for the past 61 years, thousands of people gather together for a classic Wichita Falls tradition. On Saturday, January 28th, the University Kiwanis Club of Wichita Falls hosted the annual Pancake Festival at the Wichita Falls Agricultural Center. For one day each year, the Agricultural Center is full of pleasant aromas ranging from pancakes, sausage, and the brewing of coffee. The festival is coordinated by the current president-elect of the University Kiwanis Club, January Jones. Every club pretty much has to have some type of fundraiser, a way to be able to bring in funds in order to fill those requests that come through the club of people that need help and other organizations that need assistance. So, um, you know, 61 years ago they decided to cook pancakes and, um, you know, it worked. It's, it's been popular and it's worked and it's, uh, it grew and grew over the years um, that where we eventually brought it here to the Bridwell. And, you know, and now we just stay consistent. We, we stay about 11,000 people every year, so. And we serve over 40,000 pancakes. The University Qantas Club had a lot of help from the community, such as squadrons from Shepherd Air Force Base and students from local schools in the WFISD to put on the Pancake Festival. UKC members work on the front line of cooking the pancakes, sausages, and serving beverages, while children from their key clubs volunteer their time by cleaning and distributing condiments. People attending the event ranged from first-year attendees to veteran attendees, and for some, this was their 30th year. Nathan Pilgrim attended for the first time this year. This would be my first time at the Pancake Festival. It's definitely not going to be my last. I didn't know what to expect when I came. I heard a lot of people talking about it. We talked about it at work. Um, but the more we started going over it, I realized how big this place was. And actually seeing the line behind me was crazy. Tickets cost $7 in advance and $8 at the door, and breakfast lovers get access to all-you-can-eat pancakes and sausage. Many Wichita Falls residents wait in line as early as 5 in the morning to be the first ones in line before the door opens at 6 a.m. Um, people start flowing in about 5.30, 5.45, and you know, those people, we, we're not going to make them wait. We just let them go ahead and come in. They're ready to have some pancakes and some sausage, so. If you didn't get to enjoy the delicious food this year, then look for the annual Pancake Festival next year. It happens every last Saturday of January. Reporting for m and Media, I'm Rachel Johnson. Spring recruitment and outreach on campus started nice and early this year with the very first student organization fair in January. Over 20 student organizations gathered together in Comanche Suites on January 24th in an effort to promote their organizations to new students. Established organizations including the University Programming Board, Black Student Union, and Greek Life were represented. However, this organization fair also made way for a brand new organizations to recruit and get their message out to fellow students. The Environmental Science Organization, or ESO, was organized last semester. ESO President Jalen Mavero says the goals of ESO is to raise awareness about greener initiatives on campus and in Wichita Falls. I think um, the biggest reason why we wanted to show up at the org fair is to get exposure to other students that are passionate on campus um, and to pick up skills from other organizations about how to get more students at our organization and to our meetings um, and just to feel the spirit um, of other organizations and to network. Mavero says the organization has many projects planned for this upcoming semester, including an event for Earth Day. For more information, check out ESO on OrgSync. Although the beginning of the semester is usually only a fresh start for students and organizations, the MSU men's basketball team had an opportunity for a fresh start midway through the season. Here's reporter Jesslyn Castro with the story. The 
men's basketball team is fighting to finish the second half of the season. With the current overall record of 13-7, and seven, the team still has a few more games to win in order to clinch a spot in the Lone Star Conference playoffs. After the loss of a few key players due to academic reasons, head coach Nelson Haggerty had to make a few adjustments to the lineup, adding new player B.J. Jenkins. Well, um, you know, we have a new guy, B.J. Jenkins, that just came into the lineup um, uh, four games ago. So each time uh, that he's played, he's gotten a lot better. He's gotten used to, to uh, the things that we do, um, getting in shape physically and mentally right for this part of the season. And uh, he's coming off his biggest game, you know, 28 points in the last Tarleton game. So, uh, you know, that's, that's really one of the biggest things coming into this part of the season that uh, we've had to uh, kind of recalibrate and find out where we're at as a basketball team. Haggerty says that an obstacle like this only makes the team stronger and gives them the challenge they need to build a better team. He says Jenkins brings to the team what he believes they had been lacking before. Being able to play that leadership role and stepping in at this point of the season is a tough task. And I think he's done a great job adjusting. And, you know, this is the first time I've ever had a guy come in at this point of the year and being able to step right in and, and play. Moving forward, Haggerty says he will continue to stress to the players the importance of keeping up with academic work. This has been a year that we've had to deal with that kind of adversity. And so, um, you know, we, we try to give them more help. Uh, we try to be more available for them. We try to find better resources um, for guys to make sure we're on top of that um, and just give them every opportunity to be successful. The team will play its next game against Texas A&M Kingsville on February 2nd at 7.30 p.m. at the Skank Center. For MNG Media, I'm Jessalyn Castro. Have you ever wondered about multicultural Greek life on campus or how to get involved? Look no further than the Multicultural Greek Council. On Wednesday, the 25th, the Multicultural Greek Council held the first Greek 101 event of the year in Wichita 1 and 2. Students had the opportunity to ask the various MGC members about their organizations. The multicultural Greek organizations represented were Alpha Kappa Alpha, Kappa Delta Chi, Omega Delta Phi, and Sigma Lambda Alpha. The new Director of Equity, Inclusion, and Multicultural Affairs, Dr. Sarita Green, was the host speaker. I think there's just great um, growth potential for them, and that's really what they're striving for, is to, is to be you know, known around campus, to be able to recruit more members and grow their chapters and be sustainable here at MSU. Dr. Green says that it is important for them to be able to provide a space of support for students of color. Be on the lookout for events hosted by AKA and Delta Sigma Theta stories in the coming weeks in honor of Black History Month. That's it for this edition of Campus Watch. Thanks for joining us and tune in on February 17th for more campus news.